meet Nixie. She is in Appaloosa, and she is a veteran here of one of the programs at Chesapeake Therapeutic Riding, a nonprofit organization that has been a staple here in Harford County. They are celebrating 20 years of connecting people with horses by providing education and so many resources. They have done wonders for the members of our community, and they continue to do so with your support. Join us in the next 30 minutes as we meet the founder, some of the volunteers, the staff, and of course the horses that make up this wonderful organization. I'm Christy Breslin and this is Harford Magazine. It is my honor to be here with my good friend, the founder and the executive director of Chesapeake Therapeutic Riding, Kathy Schmidt, also one of the most passionate people that you will ever meet, truly loves what she does for a living. Kathy, thanks for being with us. Thanks for inviting us into this beautiful place. So we're celebrating a big milestone here. So tell us about the very beginnings. Why did you decide to found this wonderful organization? Well, first of all, Christy, thank you. Thank you for recognizing 20 years of blood, sweat, and manure, <laughs> and a few tears. <laughs> but it's all been worth it, and I, I really appreciate you being here today. So uh, the reason I founded Chesapeake Therapeutic Riding in 2003 was I was in the corporate world. I had pretty much had it with the corporate world, and I wanted to do something that could make a lasting impact on our community. And I'm a lifelong horseman, and despite uh, some advice from people saying, never do for a living what you love, which I always thought was kind of an interesting thing to say, uh, I chose to open up a therapeutic riding center. And we literally started on Saturday mornings for three hours. I had one horse which was my own, and I borrowed two horses. And we started out with a handful of riders, and we did that for three years until we uh, moved to a bigger facility, and it has been that way ever since. And therapeutic riding, explain to our viewers what exactly you do, and how does this help people with disabilities? How it helps people with disabilities is that we're, you're in an environment that is non-judgmental. You're very safe here. You get to be outdoors, and you get to interact with these magnificent creatures. We have 11 horses, and they are all sizes, shapes, and temperaments, but they make a wonderful herd for our clients to enjoy. And you get such a good uh, feeling, not only riding them, because it does exercise your core and helps build your strength, but it also bolsters your self-esteem and your self-confidence. And even working in our unmounted activities with the horses is beneficial because you're still interacting with that horse. You're still forming a connection with these beautiful creatures. Now, Kathy, over the years, you've had so much success, but with success comes some challenges too. So let's talk about both. Yes, successes and challenges, they are the yin and the yang of the nonprofit world. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so what folks have to realize is that with success, there's a tremendous amount of su support behind that success. Right. We, as a standalone business, that's our biggest challenge because we can't be successful without support from the community. We can't do what we do without the support of the community, and that comes in the form of volunteers, corporate contributions, governmental support, the whole nine yards. We have to do fundraising constantly. Our, our budget, if you looked at the revenue that comes in, only about 11% of, of our revenue stream is from lesson fees or program fees. The other almost 90% comes from fundraising and grant funding. And in these times, it's been a challenge because everyone I know has had their pocketbook hit. Yep. 
And you know, we do the best we can do, but it's not like we can say, well, we're just going to add more riders and charge them more. We literally run out of time every day. Where there's only so many days in a week. There's only, only so much availability that our volunteers have and that our, our rider families have. So I don't want to come from a place of scarcity. I want to come from a place of abundance and ask that people who have donated in the past, whether it's to our organization or to other organizations, don't forget about us now because you want us to be there for you and for the community in the future. Well, Kathy, you have definitely done such a wonderful thing for Harford County. And for our viewers, tell them why choose CTR, why support you? Our clients are very safe here. This is a place that is very serene. You are not judged. Our community support makes a difference in other people's lives. And you may not experience it firsthand, and you may not know about it, but you, you see the good in the community when you're out there. And that's the best way to describe it. Well, we are so lucky to have you in Harford County. Congratulations on 20 years. Congratulations on your forever home. And Kathy, I'm really excited because we got a great show ahead of us. We're going to speak to some of the people on the staff, the volunteers, meet the horses, so much more. Don't go anywhere. We're just getting started. I'm now here with Megan Ferry. She is the program manager here at CTR, and I've had the pleasure of knowing Megan and working with Megan for several years. And let me tell you, it doesn't get much better than this. Megan, thanks so much for being with us today. And Thank you. start off by telling us what first brought you to CTR. So I first came to CTR almost six years ago when my family, my husband and I moved back to Harford County where I grew up. And just a quick Google search on therapeutic riding facilities in Harford County, which is my um, where I grew up, and equine studies is what I got my degree in in college. I emailed Kathy, and a couple days later, I think we met, and the rest is history. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you guys are very much going strong here. You have so many wonderful programs mm -hmm. to offer. So, can you talk about some of those? Yeah, so our most popular program is our adaptive riding program, and that is for children and adults living with disabilities to learn riding skills. Uh, we adapt everything to fit their needs, and we make sure that they learn how to ride in a space that's safe and comfortable for them. We also have our Discovering Horses program, which is an unmounted program where those children and adults can learn to take care of the horse and learn horsemanship skills, maybe for someone who's not appropriate to be mounted. Um, that's what, so we have that program. And then another very popular program is our VA program. And they come from Baltimore and Perry Point, and they do the adaptive riding program and the discovering horses program as well. So Megan, not only that, one of the greatest things about CTR is you actually tailor make these programs to meet the specific needs of the riders. So elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, so all of our programs are fit to meet the need of the individual. Um, we adapt what we do to fit their goals, their individual goals. So when they come and they, we meet them and we see if they're a good fit, we talk about their goals and what they want to accomplish so that we are able to do that in lessons. And Megan, it seems like you have so many riders here. I guess riders of all ages, correct? Mm -hmm. Our youngest that, we will, that can ride is four and then all the way up through senior citizens. We even have a program for adults aged 55 and over called Saddle Club. Well, your programming works, I know, because you've worked with my daughter, who is a type 1 diabetic, and when you say horses help and heal, that's a fact. It really, really does. And what has it done for some of the other riders? So it's, it's pretty simple. Horse, just being around horses brings a calming effect over anyone who's with them. Um, whether you're on the ground next to a horse or riding on their back, they bring a confidence to you. You're with this big animal that's staying calm and present in your space. Um, riding the horse builds physical skills and even unmounted skills as well. Brushing the horse and sitting on their back bring, uh, builds core strength. So um, the, the benefits are endless. Um, it also is great for mental health to be around animals. And 
um, I could just go on and on. Well, it sounds like it's endless. And the best part is it's a lot of fun, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the most important thing. It's fun. It's something that our clients get to come and do that their friends probably don't get to do. And it's their sport. Oh, Madison so. talked about it for years, years. <laughs> So if someone is interested and, you know, they, they want something tailor-made for them or they just want to find out about some of the programs that you offer, mm -hmm. what is the best way to do that? So our website, which is www.ctrchanginglives.org, has all of our programs listed on that, but they have a lesson interest form at the bottom of the adaptive riding tab. And if they fill that out, we'll have their contact information. We can get the ball rolling. I'll give them a call and then we can discuss what they're looking for. Well, Megan, thank you so much. They've got a great person in charge of all these wonderful programs. And like Megan has said, horses help, horses heal. We're going to hear more about that coming up next. Well, you know we need an instructor for all of our riders here at CTR, and we have the finest in Gail Zorbach. Gail, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. So how many riders does CTR currently have? Because I know you've grown so much over the years. Currently, our therapeutic riders are 30, but that does not include our veterans. Um, and that's, that varies any week from 9 to 12 to 15, so every week it Whoever shows up will take whoever comes. Oh, that's great. Now, what specific skills do you teach them when they're just getting started? When they first get started, we t teach them a lot about how to get on a horse. We use an equisizer often, which is a, not a mechanical horse, so it, you can't plug it in and turn it on, but it's a wooden carved horse that jockeys actually use to train, but it's a good mechanism for us to get riders on the horse to begin with when they're a little bit afraid of mounting at the ramps. Now, how many lessons do riders usually take per week? Is it a weekly thing? Is it a monthly thing? I mean, how do you work out the instruction? Our instruction's done weekly, but they do three-week sessions. So there's three weeks every month that they do. Um, come once a week for about a 45-minute lesson. And that includes um, sometimes getting some of the tack on, sometimes taking the tack off. Um, every now and then we'll add grooming. Sometimes it depends on the weather. Um, if we have a really hot day, it may be a more horsemanship lesson where we gr um, groom them and then bathe them. Um, sometimes we've painted them. Oh, wow. Um, so it's... You do it all we here. We do it, yes. You do it all. To meet the needs. Well. I love the horses here. I love the herd. So tell us about all the horses that you have that the riders get the opportunity to ride on. Okay, so we have Kay, Mixie, Buttons. Buttons is our little ambassador. Um, she's a mini. We take her to nursing homes. We take her to libraries. We do library um, horsepower learning with her. Everybody knows Buttons. Everybody knows Buttons, yes. Um, then we have Sally. We have Colonel. We have... Let's see who comes next. Dreamer, Rue, which is a new horse we just recently acquired. Well, can you do instructions in groups or is it always individual? It's usually in groups. Um, we do anywhere from two to four. Four is our, pretty much our maximum number based on our arena size. Um, and that's a way to get socialization with the clients. So if we don't have anybody to talk to when we're up there other than the instructor, there's not that individual socialization, because we try to group them with ability and age. So if we have five teenagers or six teenagers, we'll do two groups of three um, so that they can interact and their social skills are pretty much the same. Well, I know that it makes a difference. When we say it heals, give me an example of someone that it has really helped thrive. I would say one of the biggest impacts I have besides the balance is the verbalization. We've had students that say very little when they come here, but when they leave, they're talking about their horse, they're talking about their friends they rode with, they're talking about something they did today, whether it was weave cones or two point, and they'll use that vocabulary not just here, but at other places throughout their day. So it's a big impact, and especially for parents to see their kids talking and talking to other kids, which they don't often get a chance to see. 
Absolutely. So you're making a big difference here in the community. We are so lucky to have an instructor like you. And from what you've heard from Gail, you can do this in groups mainly. You can do it individually. CTR is here to help heal and help. And with all these horses that we have, it's a great opportunity. Coming up next, we're going to hear more about the various programs and resources they have to offer. Stay with us. Katie Santift is the program director here at CTR and Katie and I were just talking and she came to CTR not too long ago and from what I hear Katie it's been a great experience for you so far so tell us about it. Yeah it's been a really great experience working here. I you know I made the switch to working for nonprofit about mm, a year and a half two years ago um, and I just really wanted to do something different with my life. I wanted to work in a profession where I could help people and so I did that for a couple years in behavioral health care but then this opportunity came via Indeed. Kathy reached out to me, I followed up with her, and I was like, I can help people and work with animals at the same time? That's like a win-win for me. What are some of the things that the volunteers would be responsible for if they did come to CTR? Yeah, well, we've got different volunteer positions. So if they wanted to interact with riders in the lessons, they could interact as lead walkers or sidewalkers. So a lead walker would be at the head of the horse, making sure that the horse stays in the direction that we want the rider to be going, so just for safety and then the sidewalker would be there to support the rider in case they felt unsure or unstable, just a reassuring presence to you know, let, lend a hand if they need it for support. Oh, absolutely, and you know, it, it really takes a village. And from what I understand, the community support, the community involvement, you've got some great partners. Talk about that. Yeah, we really do. You know, um, we do a lot of community outreach here. Uh, we reach out to other nonprofits in the area to partner with them on programs. We've got several programs where nonprofits bring their clients here and they become our clients as well. So those partnerships are so valuable. And the best thing about this community is they reach out to us. So we do community outreach and the community reaches out to us with support. Um, they help us with fundraising. They partner with us on grant writing. Um, any kind of initiative that they have in mind that they think might benefit CTR, they send it our way too. So the community is so great. Well, what do you think are your biggest needs right now at CTR? What can the community and all of our viewers out there that are watching, what can they do to help? Well, volunteer. You know, we're always looking for more volunteers to help out in programming because in addition to being lead walkers, sidewalkers, they help us care for the horses. You know, they're the ones to help bring in the horses and get them ready for lessons. So volunteering is important to us. You know, if they're able to help fundraise, make donations, you know, if they have any opportunities, you know, corporate business, small businesses, they reach out to us all the time. You know, and if they have, you know, funding that they use to help support nonprofits, like that's what we need, you know, more, more funding opportunities. And the funds that you do raise, they go towards paying for all these wonderful clients to ride these horses to help and heal. So talk more about the help and healing aspect. Okay, so um, in terms of the way horses help us heal, um, just being around a horse is grounding. You know, there's a transfer, transference of trust that happens between the animal and us where they're trusting us. We're learning how to trust them. And through that work, we're also learning how to trust ourselves. And that can be really big for people who've been through hard times. You know, just learning that they're capable of working with this enormous animal um, in partnership with the animal is huge and it's healing. Well, it sounds like a great experience. I know firsthand. Welcome to CTR. I know that Kathy is thrilled, as she's told me many, many times, to have you. And as you've heard, Katie mentioned once again how horses can really help and heal. And we're going to hear next firsthand from the president of the board, some volunteers, and some parents and riders. So stay with us. Hi, I'm Sherry Hanley, and this is my daughter, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Liz has been riding with CTR for about 14 years. Uh, we found out about riding when um, Elizabeth was wearing a Milwaukee brace for scoliosis and kyphosis in her back. Mm -hmm. And basically, she wore the brace for 23 hours a day. One of the activities that the doctor had said that she could take the brace off for was horseback riding. So we found out about Chesapeake Therapeutic Riding at a Baltimore child camp fair and met Kathy. And um, it turned out to be that it was somewhat in our neighborhood. <laughs> at least 
um, in Harford County. So uh, we pursued it and Elizabeth has enjoyed riding ever since. It's fun. Uh, she has ridden, who have you ridden, Liz? Jamer, Joel, Crystal, Tilly. Anyone else? Victor. Victor. Since Liz has been riding at CTR, we've noticed lots of different improvements, not just physically, her posture and her back, but also her confidence level, her social skills with others, and she's improved in many different aspects of her life. My favorite member of TCR is Halloween. You got, you got the candy for, for the kids. If I could be granted one wish for CTR in the future, the wish would be that they would not have to worry about any financial instability, that they would have the money they need to pay everything that they needed to pay to make this program possible for other people like my daughter. Hi, I'm Karen Smith and this is my son Connor Smith. Hello. Hi there, we've been riding for CTR for the last 15 years, um, about 15 years or so ago. Connor was interested in doing something a little bit different than what his brother and sister does. His brother, who's a twin, is very athletic and his sister does a whole lot of different things from swimming to whatever she can get involved in. Um, so we came for an intake meeting and met with everybody here and it was just like the perfect fit. Um, the best thing about it with his disability, it was great because he was able to increase some core strength and be able to be more mobile. Um, Definitely get a good stretch out of this. Loves the stretch, <laughs> even on the worst days. Yes. Well, that and the horses are very friendly. <laughs> My favorite thing about riding would definitely have to be being around the different horses. Most of them are very gentle, even Tilly, despite her shaking, but apparently that's a compliment. Um, and definitely the different things that we do. It makes me feel good that if I'm not understanding something, they would be more than willing to um, rephrase what they're telling me to do so I can do it properly. Or, you know, they just end up making the environment feel welcome and comfortable. That way you're not uneasy about anything. One of my favorite memories, this is so silly, but I feel the need to bring it up. During the summer, we were doing one lesson with water balloons balancing it on the spoon or something and with my luck as the horse stopped the balloon ended up popping and I was all wet and so was the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Hi my name is Judy Ann Tisdell and um, I am the president of the board of directors for Chesapeake Therapeutic Riding. I met my friend Kathy about 20 years ago on a golf course and uh, we made this promise that one day I'd come back and I'd help out. And when I ran into her and she said, come back, I did. And when she said, stay, I felt honored. So I'm standing here with Jewel today, who my family sponsors. She's one of my favorite horses. She's a rescue and she lets people like myself ride her. I started riding Jewel with a saddle club. I am unfortunately over the age of 50, but not by much. And I wanted to learn how to ride a horse because quite honestly, I was afraid of them. And when I came here and I heard about the Saddle Club and I found out that for people like myself, who also would like to get stronger from MS, although I'm doing great, thank you, um, Jewel and some of the horses like herself have been wonderful for me, haven't you? Yeah, you're shaking your head high. And uh, they've been great. So I learned to balance, I'm building my core, but most of all, I've learned more about CTR and the people they serve. It's certainly not just myself, and Jewel's not the only horse here, but she's a very important horse, just like all the people we serve and we work with. If I had one wish for CTR, it'd be that somebody out there would pay our mortgage for the farm and that we could use all of the money so anybody that needed to come here and wanted to come here could do it for free. It would take some of the time off the staff raising money. So if you're out there, come get us. We're looking for you. In the meantime, for me and Jewel, giddy up. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Linda Lamery. And I'm a volunteer here at CTR, and I've been a volunteer since, uh, I think, September of 2008, if I remember correctly. I answered an uh, ad, so to speak, uh, that was placed in the Aegis asking for people who like horses and work with special needs. Since I was a nurse um, who used to ride, I figured it was a match made in heaven. 
Uh, so I signed up for orientation, arrived in the hurricane, <laughs> and have stayed ever since. <laughs> Volunteer work at an organization that serves uh, people with disabilities um, really gives you an opportunity, I think, to um, explore a lot of different things. Uh, working or volunteering really here at CTR, uh, you never know what you're gonna be asked to do. <laughs> it may or may not be in your wheelhouse, as we say, uh, but you sure give it a go. And uh, everybody's always been really appreciative of it. And um, you just come in, leave, every, you know, leave everything else behind and uh, attend to what's going on with the horse and the rider and just kind of all comes together for everybody, I think. Oh, the horses here at CTR, I cannot believe how really versatile they are, how uh, flexible they really are. The fact that they are um, so in tune, I think, with the riders uh, and their needs, it's really amazing to see uh, how really they just adapt and go with the plans. If there was a wish, if I, I do have wishes for CTR certainly, and I would love to see that they're able to uh, expand and continue the program uh, and, uh, and benefit more riders. Um, and the volunteers, everybody who you know, contributes in some way. Um, and uh, I think it would be really nice if uh, riders and families you know, didn't have to pay. Uh, so certainly if there's a way where funding could be um, donated uh, for, for the riders to make it a lot easier for their families, many of them have a lot of needs anyway. So that would be great. I'm Michelle Byers and I'm a mom of a rider here at CTR. My name is Samantha Byers and I'm a rider. Samantha started riding in July of 2010. Um, after Kathy and I met to talk about um, possible resources for uh, my employer um, and after talking with her and learning more about CTR, I knew that it was the place for Samantha to be. Riding a horse is really fun and whether, whether you choose or a horse or like seeing a little pony is like really cute. My favorite thing to ride a horse is riding Tilly. The differences I've seen in Samantha is um, her confidence level has increased dramatically. Um, her overall um, physical demeanor, Samantha has scoliosis, so when she's on the horse she sits uh, so nice and tall and, and proud. Um, and it gives her some exercise that she doesn't otherwise get. My favorite memory is probably coming here every Thursday. My wish for CTR would be lots of funding um, and uh, volunteers to help out. Um, it's so important what they offer here for not only um, adults like Samantha, um, but veterans and other people with differing dif disabilities. And uh, we just need more resources. As you've seen and as you've heard today, Chesapeake Therapeutic Riding has done so much for Harford County. Kathy, 20 years, you started it, you're gonna lead us into the future. What would you like to say to Harford County? Harford County, thank you for 20 wonderful years. The future is bright. And of course, anybody that wants to get involved, you're always accepting donors, riders, sponsors. How can we get more involved, Kathy? If everybody would visit us at ctrchanginglives.org, we'd appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Christy Breslin. This is Kathy Schmidt. We'll see you next month on Harford Magazine.